Now I know this is a very long video for an engine hoist, but if you're a professional technician who uses these things every day, I'd highly recommend watching this as you'll see just how uh, great of an engine hoist this is and you'll probably end up building one just like it because it's an absolute game changer. Uh, best engine hoist I've ever used. I bought it about a year ago off Amazon. It's the three ton American Forge and Foundry and um, it's just been a really good lift. Now the way you see it right now is not how it was when it showed up at my door. I've done several very useful modifications that can be done to any engine hoist. Now the first part of this video I'm going to show you the modifications I've done talk about what I like about the lift, and then the second part of the video, you're going to see me use this in several different applications, lifting anything from a small cylinder head to a very large diesel. And then the third part of the video uh, will be going back in time to the day I got this thing, so you can see what it looked like when it was brand new, and I'm going to compare it to a two-ton foldable engine hoist that uh, most people use. And after that, the last part of the video will be me uh, making all of the modifications. So the biggest and best modification I did was add this hand crank winch. I wish I could say I was the one who came up with the idea of putting an, a winch on an engine hoist because it's absolutely brilliant, but I'm not. Some other guys did it on YouTube, but they used a 12-volt winch. I got to say I'm very, very happy with the hand crank winch. It just works great. Um, I also added some welded in nuts on the bottom of the boom in several different locations. Um, they're caged nuts and they're welded. You'll see later in the video, but I can take this eye bolt and move it up and down the boom in several different locations, and that allows me to uh, hook up a ratchet strap and grab onto the front of a motor, and I can tilt the motor like such. Uh, makes lining it up with the transmission really nice. Um, same thing here. I put these swivel hooks on the, on the side, and now I can grab with the ratchet strap to the side of the engine, and I can twist the engine sideways. So now I have full control with these hookup points um, to tilt the motor. <clears throat> and then, of course, I had to add this pulley here for the uh, cable. Had to add this support for the cable. Modified the handle. You'll see later in the video. Uh, the other big modification I had to do was cut the wheels off the front, and I put these uh, sealed bearing casters on here. Those things work really nice. And But that was pretty much uh, all the modifications I, I did to it. Um, now what I really like, not only is it extremely beefy, but the legs have enough spread on them, and you'll see, um, you know, you buy a motor that's remanufactured or a new motor or whatnot, they come in those large plastic totes, and your normal engine hoist, you have to have somebody lift up one side of the tote to get the leg under it, because the spread of the legs is not far enough apart uh, for you to just, you know, roll up your engine hoist and hook up to the motor, so that, that wide spread is a huge advantage. Well, that's enough talking. Let's see this thing in action. This feels like the heaviest motor I lifted with it so far. It's a 6.4 power stroke, and this thing is just massive. Still no, still no bend to the boom. So this is where those swivel attachment points on the side of the boom come in really handy. We got a 6.4 power stroke here. And the way we've got it rigged, it's leaning to the uh, passenger side here quite a bit. So I've hooked onto the alternator bracket and up to that attachment point with a little ratchet strap. Now I can easily level the load. Way better than what it was. My previous place of employment had a pretty decent sized engine hoist, but the legs didn't have all that much spread on them. And so when we get these reman motors in these plastic uh, boxes, you had to have one person lift up one side of the box to slide the leg under. It was a it was a two person job to get the motor out of the out of the box. But with this hoist, it's got enough spread. It has plenty of room to get on each side of the box and pick the motor right out. This thing it ma it makes it so much easier. This thing works great to get a Cummins onto the heavy duty OTC engine stand. It lifts it like this. In the, this is not even max lift and we still have plenty of clearance to roll the stand underneath it and it's got enough spread between the legs where there's plenty of room to roll the stand right up in there and then drop the motor down to put it on the stand. Here we got a Duramax LML fully dressed and it lifts it with ease while it's still connected to the transmission. If I gotta lift something real heavy I'll take the winch off and use the, uh, the hook that came with it obviously because the winch is only rated for 2,400 pounds. 
this is a uh, forklift counterweight and that's probably every bit of 2,000 pounds. And the casters show uh, no signs of uh, fatigue, so that's good. I've got a 454 cylinder head on right now, and even with that lightweight part, the clutch does engage going down. And the other cool thing about the cable versus the chain setup is I can sit here and spin my part around and around. Now, it won't hold this position. It will slowly rotate back because it's a spiral wound cable. You know, the more, uh, the farther this hook is down, the less uh, it's going to want to return to its position. But this is so nice compared to the chain, which you're having to pull really hard to get a motor lined up or something because it's always trying to twist back to that, uh, you know, angled position. Work like a champ. Drop that cylinder head on there, no problem. 6.0 power stroke with a transmission, doesn't even break a sweat. So now I got a 12 valve Cummins here. And even with that heavy Cummins, I can still roll the front of the engine hoist and change directions without too much difficulty. Now one of the other advantages to having the winch on there is if I have a ratchet strap on the front of the engine, I don't have to adjust the strap to actually adjust the tilt of the engine as I can just simply lower the cable or raise the cable and it will tilt the engine for me without having to go uh, mess with the ratchet strap. Check out the new engine hoist. This is a three ton model from American Forge and Foundry sitting next to a Harbor Freight foldable two ton. And I was looking for a three ton engine hoist as the two ton engine hoist when it's in its max extended position, which is where you use it 99% of the time, is not really rated for lifting even a 5.9 Cummins, which according to Google weighs 1,050 pounds and you got the boom extended all the way, you're only a half ton, so a thousand pounds. You're underrated for the job. It's, it's very dangerous. The square tubing is bending like crazy on the boom. The casters are not rated for that amount of weight. And you'll see here when I show you the condition of our current two-ton foldable Harbor Freight uh, you know, hoist compared to this uh, new three-ton. Now my brother has pulled lots of Cummins motors with this thing. And it's actually starting to bend the square tubing right here. But, as you can also tell, he drilled, he drilled a hole farther out on the boom, which is extremely dangerous. Puts a lot more leverage on it and well, causes what we're seeing here. He actually has another one of these hoist out back where it completely tore through from doing exactly that. So, I would not recommend doing that. But the whole reason for doing that is because he needed the extra, the extra link. There was no getting around there. So, that's one of the big advantages to this three ton. Not only is it a lot more beefy it's rated for that capacity i mean now we're rated for 2,000 pounds at our max extended position and we don't need to drill a hole out here because the throat depth which i'm calling the depth from the hydraulic cylinder rod to the center line of, of your hook which is very important when you got your you know radiator core, core support sometimes they'll run up against your cylinder so you want as much length as you can get my awesome drawing here so the three ton has a 58 inch throat depth versus the Harbor Freight is 46 inch. That's a foot extra depth at its full extended length. Now that's the throat depth I'm counting with a factory hole, not my brother's extra drilled hole. This one's obviously not a foldable hoist, so it's gonna take up a little bit more room. The boom does go down, I'll, sh I'll show you later. It stores fairly compact. I mean, when the legs are slid all the way in, it's, uh, it's a little bit shorter than the Harbor Freight Jack in, in its unfolded position. Now the white lines here, I haven't really overextended it because it has a piece of uh, you know, bar stock welded on the side of the square tubing that will prevent it from sliding out. So this is uh, its true max extended position. And then it even has another piece of bar stock welded even farther down. So um, if you wanted to, you could potentially even extend it farther, but I'm pretty sure they don't want you to do that, hence the paint marks. Anyways, some measurements here. So the square tubing on the legs is, on the three ton, it's four inches tall by three and three sixteenths wide. You know, that's, that's a primary leg. And then on the Harbor Freight, two and three quarter inch square. So it's quite a bit, you know, bigger on the square tubing, as you can see. The height 
So when the boom is at its level position like it is here, the height from the ground to the bottom of your boom on the three ton is 58, no, no, 58 and a half inches tall. I know, I know the arrow is pointed to the top, but it really means the bottom of the boom there versus the Harbor Freight is 56 inches. So it is a couple inches uh, taller when, when the boom is level. Uh, the casters on this one, uh, the rear caster is four and a quarter inch tall. Rear casters over here, we have three and a half, and these are the same at three and a half. These are six inch wheels, but they're not casters. Now this is one thing I hate about this hoist. Why would you not put casters that rotate on, on all four corners? So this is going to be a modification that I'm going to make later on in the video. I'm going to get rid of that because that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, if you were trying to pull an engine on like a front wheel drive car, well, you got to go sideways with the lift a lot of times and then, uh, you know, pull it out. So it's definitely going to need some casters that rotate. You can see the casters here due to the overloading. Well, you can't really see it right now because I don't have a motor on there. But man, these casters, they are completely shot. Um, well, you can see there how the steel is bent. They're very cheap casters, you know, on this Harbor Freight model. Look at that doesn't help that the bolts loosened up one thing about this hoist also don't like is the welds you know it'll hold but you can definitely tell it's made in china yeah don't let it fool you it's american forge and foundry made in china so but it is constructed pretty pretty darn good I mean, it's got a massive bolt here for the hydraulic ram you can tell you know it's beefy they got extra reinforcement on the inside where your bolt goes through i've had some other brand lifts where um the bolts get worn down really quickly not really quickly but over the years they get worn down because on the boom it's just being supported on just a little you know 3 16th inch 3 16th thick piece of steel versus this you got all that meat there you're never gonna have to worry about that bolt uh you know wearing out on you down here Similar, decent amount of meat. Um, this is a pretty cool feature. So on the on the release here, it actually has a coil spring, which will go back to its normal position. That way you're not fumbling. You know, you start to loosen it up, and oh my god, it's going down, and you're trying to trying to tighten it. The, the spring goes ahead and shuts it off for you. So that is a pretty cool feature. There's your Harbor Freight. Not horrible. They both have storage for your handles. And the other thing I'm going to do is I want to put a hand crank winch on here. I saw some other guys on YouTube do this, which is a great idea um, to have a winch. It could be hand crank, electric, whatever, and come down and then put a pulley. I, a lot of the guys are mounting the pulley up on top here which is fine but in the automotive application a lot of times you know you when you're coming out with your engine if you have your hood on well that pulley now is going to be hitting the hood because even the boom itself a lot of times will barely scrape the hood insulation and that you know that gives you barely enough clearance so i don't want to add any more height to this that than absolutely necessary so i think i'm gonna uh, you know do the same design with the pulley but instead of having it on top I'm just going to pull this bolt out and I measured, I can put a three inch diameter pulley here where I can still have a little bit of meat. I don't have to completely slot this and then have it, you know, weaken the strength of the tubing. Your boom, you can only lower it down as far as to where it's going to hit your, uh, you know, your radiator core support or whatnot. And so if you got a lifted truck and your core supports way up here, you can't let your boom down any farther well your hook in order to hook to your motor you got to drop your hook way down which works you can start picking the motor up but then now your boom is going to hit your hood so with the with the crank i can just you know crank down the hook grab onto the engine and uh and then i can just crank it straight up and get the engine really close to my boom that way my boom is going to clear my hood coming out so i think that's a that's a great idea so Thanks YouTube for that. Square tubing here on the three ton is 
three and a quarter inch square tubing versus the Harbor Freight is two and three eighths. And on that max lift height, they're both eight feet max lift from the ground to where uh, where the bottom of the of the tubing would be. They also added some extra reinforcement here. You see this plate they welded in? That's on both sides. That's that's pretty neat. So here's that bar stock I was talking about welded on the side of the leg that hits up against your stop bolt. So it's actually got two of them here. I don't think they want you extending it past this first one, obviously because of the paint mark, but I just wanted to show it does have both of those. Of course, that one's welded right on the end of the tubing, so I definitely would want more engagement than that. So I'm never gonna, you know, take it past past this position for sure. I will say for being such a large lift, it does collapse pretty compact. As you can tell, it's shorter than the Harbor Freight and it's extended length of course by just a little bit. So these are the casters I'm going to be putting on here. Got them for a McMaster car. They're rated for over a thousand pounds each. Very nice. Um, they're double ball bearing on the inside. Of course, got your grease cert here. And there's another grease cert on the axle itself. Solid steel wheel. Very nice quality. But here's the problem. As you can see, if I were to simply put it on the bottom of the tubing here, it's going to raise the height of the lift uh, substantially. So I got some two inch quarter wall square tubing that I'm going to completely cut this off. And this two by two is going to slide into, you know, this. And I'm going to drill some holes with a hole saw to be able to weld this and then on the bottom I'm going to cut and bend that up into it and weld it so that will allow me to then on the bottom I got some 3 8 plate that's going to be welded centered on the bottom of the tubing here like so and then the caster will be bolted to this but I'm going to do it in a way that the elevation of the uh, leg here will stay the same as the 2x2 two two square tubing will sit higher up, you know, into this tubing when it slides in there. And, of course, I can't put this plate on the very bottom. That will still give me too much elevation. So I'm going to have to put this 2x2 two two in the mill and mill out a section that's the same width as the uh, plate here. So the plate will be inset into the tubing, and that will allow this to all be at the same elevation that it was with the factory wheel. But this tubing here being two by two is actually a little bit too wide to fit inside the dimensions of this tubing. So I'm gonna have to put this in the mill as well and completely mill down on both sides evenly to reduce the thickness of the tubing. I don't think I have to say to take too much off, but I am gonna have to shave that down some to fit inside there. Got the ends cut off. As you can see, the tubing is just barely too wide to slip inside there. I'm also going to have to take a little belt sander and smooth that out where the tubing is formed together. Now if you look at the way this is going to work, the caster is going to be on the bottom of this tubing that slid into this tubing. So when you got all the weight on the engine hoist, what's the tubing going to try to do? It's going to try to pivot right here at the top of this tubing because the weight's here and the tubing's going to want to try to bend downward like that. Of course, it's going to be welded like crazy in there so it's probably way overkill. But just to help with the strength, I'm going to drill a hole, hole saw, and put a very thick spacer through the tubing and then plug weld it on the bottom side here. That way, inside the tubing, it has a solid piece of metal that will prevent that tubing from trying to bend downward. I'm also going to take a hole saw and cut several holes in here. That way I can plug weld this on both sides and probably along the top as well. So I gotta take off 25 thousandths of an inch on each side of this tubing in order to get to slip into those legs. I could just use a bell sander, but the mill is a lot more fun. Yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty good. So this is how it's gonna work. It's gonna slide in there. Gonna, of course, weld all these holes up. I went ahead and notched the tubing, gave a little bevel, 
when I bend this down, it's not going to be one of those ugly butt welds. I'll have a little place for the fillet to go. Pretty thick steel spacer. It's going to drop down in there. Going to weld that around, cut that off flush. That gives the tubing strength from being able to do this. Of course, we're looking at this upside down. Then we have our caster plate. And I went ahead and cut this down a half inch. That will maintain the correct elevation, the same elevation that it had from the factory. And, uh, you know, the whole reason for having to do all this was because I wanted heavy duty casters. And these are the only solid steel ones that I could find that would fit the job. And of course, they're five and a half inch mount height. If you went any lower on the mount height, well, you lost capacity on your caster and they ended up just being cheap pieces of junk. So that's why I opted for these very nice heavy duty. Now time for paint. The wheels turned out real nice. We've already used this thing several times since the last clip with the heavy diesels and these wheels work perfect. Roll very easily. Very happy with that. And now, starting to mount the hand winch. This is a Tyler brand, 12,000 pound, oh sorry, 2,600 pound winch. And then, got the boom removed. And slotted the boom here for the pulley. This pulley you got from McMaster Car. And the cool thing about it, Actually has needle bearings on the inside, and then it fits obviously a little loose in there. So I got some shim washers to uh, to shim it to center in that slot. I got the winch mounted with six M10 fine thread bolts. When I got the winch all done, the cable was actually rubbing the top of this boom right here. So I just welded on some brackets and put this uh, piece of tubing in there through a bolt. And uh, now that, that cable will not get frayed on the top of that tubing. Also took the handle that used to be bolted right here and cut it in half and welded it on, on these uprights. I had to do that because if not, the handle here would, uh, would hit that handle. Um, but it worked a lot better because uh, it made it wider so you have a little bit more leverage when you're turning it. The way the factory had it, it was so skinny you didn't really have much control uh, when you were trying to actually turn the hoist. So on the bottom of the boom, I've drilled several holes and on the inside I'm welding this uh, captured nut to the inside of the boom as you can see right here. Um, now I can stick an eye bolt in uh, many different locations to be able to tilt the motor with a ratchet strap. So if you want to modify one of these engine hoists like I did in this video, I'll be putting all the part numbers to the casters and uh, pulleys and stuff that I used in the description. So you can check that out there.